Asian superheroes. My name is Andrew, and welcome to Quantitech Solutions Online Superhero Academy. Our goal is to bring you a series of online demos, webinars, and all the technical know-hows about smarter industrial automation. In this episode of the Back of TwinCat programming series, you'll learn how to create a TwinCat 3 solution and also be familiarized with TwinCat 3's engineering environment. TwinCat 3, the new standard in many areas of automation. It comes into two forms under the extended automation architecture, which is the engineering environment and the runtime environment. It is the programming software for all the back of controllers, integrated into Microsoft Visual Studio, and supports different programming languages. Those were all discussed in the previous video. If you somehow missed it, you can check the link on the description below. Now, I'll be demonstrating how to create a TwinCat3 solution, and after that, let's get you familiarized on the TwinCat3 engineering environment. Let's start with the TwinCat system menu. After successful installation of the TwinCat3, you will see the TwinCat icon on the bottom right of your screen. This icon indicates the status of the TwinCat runtime system of your local system or your local computer, whether it is on config mode, run mode, stop mode, or exception mode. To access the TwinCat system menu, just right-click on the TwinCat system service icon in the system tray. The TwinCat system menu provides all the important commands for access to functions of the TwinCat system. In addition to important runtime commands for starting and stopping the runtime, the menu contains commands for accessing the router settings, and the communication between engineering and runtime. The router commands are especially important when engineering and runtime are on separate computers. The engineering environment can also be started directly via the TwinCat system menu. The first one we have for the TwinCat system menu is the information about TwinCat. Upon clicking this, it will open the TwinCat system dialog which lists all the essential data of the installed TwinCat, such as the complete TwinCat version, logged on user, AMS Net ID of your local system, hardware platform, and all the license information. Secondly, there's the TwinCat tools. Once you hover your mouse cursor, it will show the available default tools for the TwinCat 3. The event viewer, Upon clicking, this will open the Windows Event Viewer in which details of system errors can be found. TwinCat Project Compare This will open an application program for comparing or merging TwinCat projects. And the TwinCat Switch Runtime This opens an application program for switching the TwinCat runtime environment between TwinCat 2 and TwinCat 3. So two versions of TwinCat can run on your local computer. Third is the real-time settings, which you could see the time base. The time base for calculating the percentage, currently a fixed time base of 1 millisecond is set. Then a CPU usage limit. The slider can be used to allocate processor time to the TwinCat real-time system. And then the system latency that shows the current and maximum latency time in the real-time system. The time by which the central system tick is delayed is measured. The maximum time is stored until the slider is operated or dialog is exited. The latency time is, of course, also measured when the dialog is not open. Next we have is the router information and settings. First one is the AMS router information. Basically, it contains all the general information of the router system such as memory that shows the displayed RAM that is required in the TwinCat system for AMS messages and for memory management in the TwinCat real-time environment. The entire memory is requested by Windows when the TwinCat system starts up. The memory size can be configured in the TwinCat system node. Also, the registered ports, drivers, and transports information can be seen. Next is the cleanup. 
This is the cleanup function of the router. It can be used to release router ports originating from programs that are no longer functional. This function is particularly useful in the development phase of PLC projects. Change AMS Net ID. This is the AMS Net ID of your local computer in the TwinCat network. As discussed on the previous video, ADS or Automation Device Specification is the means of communication of one or more ADS devices in one TwinCat network. The unique identification of the ADS devices is implemented with the aid of two identifiers, the ADS port and the AMS Net ID. The AMS Net ID consists of six bytes and is represented in a dot notation. The Net IDs must be assigned by the project planner and must not be repeated in the TwinCat network. By default, the installation generates an AMS Net ID from the IP address of the system, if available, plus 1.1. If no IP address can be determined during the installation, the AMS Net ID would be 1.1.1.1.1.1 as a default. Every PC on the network can be uniquely identified by a TCP IP address such as 172.1.2.16. The AMS Net ID is an extension of the TCP IP address and identifies a TwinCat message router. Example 172.1.2.16 plus 1.1. And for the last one is the edit routes option. This will open the TwinCat Routes dialog. It shows the route information of the local system such as the name of the route, AMS Net ID, IP address of the device, and the connection status with the local computer. This is where you can also add new routes to establish connection with a new ADS device. Now that you know the contents and the information of the TwinCat system menu, Let's proceed on creating a TwinCat 3 solution or project. First, let's start the TwinCat Engineering Environment or XAE. To do this, start the TwinCat XAE located on the TwinCat system menu. The Visual Studio versions recognized during the installation and supported by TwinCat are thereby offered. So you might see different TwinCat XAE versions on your computer. In my case, I will open the latest TwinCat XAE 2013. Open the TwinCat XAE by left-clicking on the icon. Alternatively, Visual Studio can also be started by typing it on the Start menu. Select the command New, then Project in the menu file. The dialog New Project opens. Second is, select the template TwinCat Projects, TwinCat XAE Project and enter a name. For example here, TwinCat Project 1 and a storage location in the file system. I'll place it here in my desktop and create a new folder for TwinCat Projects. the dialog with OK. The TwinCat 3 user interface consists of various components. The appearance of the user interface is determined by the arrangement and configuration of the individual components. By default, the standard components are shown after creating the TwinCat project. The standard components are menu bar, toolbar, solution explorer, Editor window, Properties window, Toolbox, Message window, and also you would see the TwinCat system state. The menu bar shows the menus according to the settings in the customized dialog. By default, these are the menus that could be seen after creating a TwinCat solution. Next is the toolbar. So the toolbars provide quick access to commands. Uh, we have here is the standard toolbar option, second is the TwinCat PLC toolbar option 
where you could find the selected PLC project and where you would apply the following functions or commands such as PLC start and stop command, the login and logout command to access the online environment of your PLC, force values, unforced values, write values, PLC reset cold and reset to origin command, and then the Twincat 3XAE base toolbar options. This toolbar contains commands for controlling the Twincat 3 runtime environment, such as activate configuration command, restart Twincat system, command config mode, and many more. Another thing is the toolbox. This shows the tools that are available for the currently active editor. For example, we have a PLC ladder editor. The toolbox contains graphical programming elements such as coils, contacts, and many more. Next is the Solution Explorer. This shows the Twincat 3 project with the associated project elements in a structured form. This is where you'll configure the system, do the programmings of the PLC, C++, and also configure I.O. devices. Then on this Properties window, this shows the properties of the element that is currently selected in the Solution Explorer. The Editor window. This is used for defining and editing objects for language editors, example structured text, CFC editor, ladder editors. The editor window usually shows the language editor in the lowest part and the declaration editor in the upper part. For other editors, the editor window may also contain dialogues, for example, task editor or device editor. Next is the Twincat system state. You can recognize the status of the Twincat system by the color of the Twincat system service icon in the information area of the taskbar. The following states are possible. If it's blue, the Twincat 3 runtime is in configuration mode. If it's green, Twincat 3 runtime is running. If it's red, it is on stop mode. And if it's in yellow, the Twincat 3 runtime is in exception mode. These other windows provide information about the current processes in the project in offline or online mode. First is the message window. This shows current errors, warnings, and messages relating to the syntax check, compile, process, and etc. Next is monitoring window and online views of editors. This is used for monitoring a POU or a user-defined list of expressions or variables. And the information and status bars. This indicates the Twincat 3 runtime mode. If an editor window is currently active, the current cursor position and the set editing mode are displayed. In online mode, you see the current program status. Now that we're done with the standard components of the user interface of Twincat 3 Engineering, let's proceed on the other information or details of the Solution Explorer. Let's start with the system. After you have set up a new Twincat project, there will be a new empty project tree in the Solution Explorer, which looks like this. In the system node, you can configure the Twincat runtime system with project-specific Twincat system and real-time settings. To access the system properties, just double-click on the system node. Then, you will get a pop-up window with a number of configuration tabs. You'll see that the general tab, if no remote system is selected, for example, the default is the local Twincat runtime, is the target system the tabs will look like this. The general tab provides information about the version and build number of the Twincat runtime system which is installed locally. This choose target button is the choose target system. With a click on the choose target in the general tab, you get a pop-up window where you can choose the remote target system. You can either click on the target system in the list or search for one in your network with a click on the search ethernet. 
This will then now open the Add Routes window. Next is the Settings tab. In this tab, you can configure whether the TwinCat target system should boot in config mode or on run mode. The system node also have its own sub nodes. To view those sub modes, just click on this little triangle on the left side of the system. You'll see the license, which is used for management of all TwinCat licenses, the real time for configuration of TwinCat real time settings, and display for real time load. Tasks for configuration of possible additional user-defined tasks and routes for information about TwinCat target system routing and the last one is the TCCOM objects for the overview and management of TwinCat component object models. Now let's move on to the PLC node. TwinCat 3 PLC realizes one or more PLCs with the international standard IEC 61131-3 third edition on one CPU. All programming languages described in the standard can be used for programming. The blocks of the type program can be linked with real-time tasks. Various convenient debugging options facilitate fault finding and commissioning. Program modifications can be carried out at any times and in any size online. For example, when the PLC is running, all the variables are available symbolically by ABS and can be read and written in appropriate clients. To give you an overview of the PLC node of the Solution Explorer, this is where the creation and configuration of a PLC project is done, the programming, testing and troubleshooting of PLC projects, monitoring of PLC projects during runtime, updating the PLC project on the PLC during runtime, using libraries, multitask data access, creating visualizations, reference programming, and many more. On the next topics of this series, we'll be focusing on much more details of the PLC programming in TwinCat 3. On the PLC node itself or the PLC object icon, the status of the PLC modules can also be identified whether the PLC is logged out, running or stopped, or even the TwinCat 3 status if it's in config mode or if it's on run mode. Since this back of programming series is all about PLC, we would only focus on the system, PLC, and the I.O. And last but not the least, the I.O. node. The I.O. configuration is an important part of TwinCat. The simplest level of extension of TwinCat is the TwinCat I.O. level, which means that in the TwinCat tree view, there is the entire I.O. at any rate. After the respective configurations for various tasks have been carried out and all relevant variables are known to the I.O. section, the hardware, habitually a field bus with I.O. modules, can be configured within the I.O. section. It is also possible to configure the I.O. section first and the other task later on. So basically, if you want to add an I.O. terminal, for example, a digital input of 16 channels and a digital output of 16 channels, this is where you configure it. And if you want to link the variables in your PLC program on those hardware you just add, this is where you auto-scan the I.O. hardware and do the linking afterwards. So that was the overview of TwinCat 3's engineering environment. On the next videos, we would be more familiarized on each of those nodes that we have discussed, especially the PLC and the I.O. That's it for this video. If you want to learn more about Contratech Smarter Automation, you can visit our website at www.contratech.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our social media accounts. See you in the next video!